Whoa, you're getting to look a lot like Christmas. Yeah, they just played that one. Oh, I, I mean for real. Hey, hey, Thomas. So, how are things? What do you mean with Trevor? All's quiet on the upstairs front. Mm, it's too bad Christmas ceasefires are usually temporary. Oh, listen, I, uh, I talked to Dr. Casals today from the Rediscover Institute. He said he enjoyed meeting us both. Jordy, did you hear? Rediscover has a much nicer ring to it than reform school, doesn't it? Come on. You saw the place. You know that's not what it is. Oh, oh, excuse me. A rehabilitation facility for troubled teens. <sighs> he said as soon as we fill out these forms, they can send an escort team to pick them up. How convenient. Just call 1-800-COME-TAKE-MY-KID-AWAY. Look, we both agreed. This is what he needs. Oh, I know we did, John, but I... Honey, it's a painful decision. The doctor said it would be. But, I mean, that's what tough love is all the about. the hell with the doctor? He's not part of our family. Trevor's not his son. Then what choice do we have? I just can't do it, honey. I can't send him away. Besides. It's Christmas, a time when families should be together, not apart. We have to have hope, we have to have faith. We have to try again. of PS69 for helping us sing in the holidays. When we come back, don't throw away your old toothbrushes. We'll teach you how to transform them into treasured Christmas ornaments. But first, a word from Stan's Big and Tall Shop for the hard-to-fit man at hard-to-beat prices. And we're out. Boy, that was wonderful. More people. Weren't these angels precious, Norma? I just love this time of year. I feel as if all things are possible, that all wishes can come true, don't you? We've been canceled. Wait, what? I got a call from the station manager. Alex Live just croaked. But how, how could that happen? Easy. No ratings, no sponsors. What about Stan's big and tall? Stan Hawks is last size 60 suit today. Bonnie's bath boutique? Down the drain. Tammy's travel? She said sayonara. We're, then we're washed up? Finished? Our last show's Friday. And just what do they intend to replace us with? Reruns of Dr. Bernstein, Frontier Chiropractor. <gasps> Talk about adding injury to insult. There must be some way we can get a new sponsor. I know you believe in miracles, but that would be pushing it, even for this time of year. We're on the air. Welcome back, and Merry Christmas. When it comes to Christmas, I am such a sucker. Street corner Santas and carolers, AA meetings. AA meetings. Oh, it's being reminded that the old holiday spirit comes from the heart, and not out of a bottle. It's also the season for burglaries and muggies and shopliftings. That's all it is. Oh, that's cheery. Well, that's my job, Teddy, to think about stuff like that. Well, maybe you could put your job aside long enough to count your blessings. Mm -hmm. Help the cat come through a terrible ordeal. You have someone in your life that cares about you very much. 
And last but not least, we're both sober. Well, yes, I must admit there's a lot to be thankful for. I gotta get back to the office. Oh, no, bah, humbug. You're going shopping with me. I can't, Katie. Well, I have an offer you can't refuse. What if we spend Christmas Eve together? Maybe even Christmas morning, if we could. Thank you for the offer, but I gotta work. The entire holiday? Well, we usually draw straws because he was gonna take the Santa ship. But since I'm one of the only guys on the force who doesn't have a family, I volunteer. Well, that was big hearted of you. What, 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 why can't you get someone to switch with you? It's too late, Teddy. Everybody's already made plans. Well, so did I. See you after the holidays. Uh, I was planning on getting him the building blocks, the toy farm, talking Bernie Dinosaur. Hey, wait. I had Bernie on my list. Is this what you wanted? No, you said Okay. You get him, Bernie. All right, what else? Uh, let's see, Jack in the Box, a Disney cassette. Wait, 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 which cassette? What do you think of that train, uh, huh? The Jungle Book. Isn't that great? Will you ask Santa Claus to get you one? I'll get him 101 Dalmatians. You know, this was really smart of us, comparing lists so we don't duplicate Thomas's presents. Yeah, it was really smart. So, what are you doing for the holidays? Well, it's kind of slow at the store. Nobody's ordering their Christmas codfish, so <laughs> I just thought I'd hang out at the house, relax, watch the games. How about you? Oh, it's slow at the Sweet 16, too, I guess. <laughs> People eat at home this time of year. So I'll probably just catch up on my bookkeeping. You know, if we were really smart, we wouldn't be standing here without our own kid. I'm watching other people with theirs. Oh, Mitch, how could we have been so stupid? Thinking we could have won anything by hurting each other. Oh, Frankie, Frankie, please, don't cry. <laughs> I'm not just crying for me. I'm crying for you, too. What we both lost. <laughs> All right, come on, let's... Let's just go inside and buy Thomas's presents. Did you see the smile on her face? Oh, my God, Georgie. <laughs> Look at this place. I'm on that Christmas tree. You Hanukkah bush. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Um, well, did even you. Well, why are you all so surprised? I get a tree every year. Well, it's, it's just that this year, we thought, you thought what? Well, considering your problems with Trevor. It's because of Trevor that I want this to be the biggest and best Christmas we've ever had. So you all better be there Christmas Eve. Sister's orders. We'll be here. But don't expect us to squeeze into our tutus and do the dance of the sugar plum fairy. What Alex means is Christmas seems more blue than white. Falconer just informed me that he has to work the entire holiday. My show's been canceled. Mitch and I don't have Thomas George. Come on, you guys, have you forgotten? Daddy's an angel. He's sure to make a wish. But what for? Because that's what Daddy says an angel is. Your most heartfelt wish. That out into the world to come true. No matter how bleak things look, there's always someone watching over us. Aren't you Alex Lie? your show. I never miss it. I hope it stays on forever. Oh. Loves it. Never misses it. Hopes it stays on <laughs> Something wrong, miss? Oh, Santa. Uh, uh, don't worry. I, I, I'm gonna buy this. Oh, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you. That box hardly seems big enough for all your tears. Oh, I'm fine, really. It's, it's seeing all these wonderful bargains. Five gallons of bath oil beads for only $7.99. It just makes me want to weep for joy. <laughs> there, there. Santa doesn't like to see tears on Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is a time being happy, not for tears. Now, 
Why don't you tell me all about it? In the middle of Price Town? That's what Santa's for. To make your Christmas wishes come true. <laughs> well, if I wanted a new dolly or a shiny red wagon, you'd be the first person I'd ask. But I don't think even you can give me what I need. And what is that? A new sponsor. You see, I'm Alex Halsey. Host of Alex Live. It's a talk show on Channel... Oh, never mind. It's, it's not a very big show. I mean, it's not Jay or Conan or Dave or Arsenio or Phil or Oprah or Sally Jesse or Joan or Montel or Vicky or even Geraldo, but it's a nice little show. Or at least it was. But now it's been canceled. That's too bad. Oh, I know, it's not the greatest tragedy. I mean, when I think of all the people in the world who are sick, who go to bed hungry, who don't have a roof over their heads, I realize I'm a very lucky woman. I survived breast cancer, a divorce, but still, my show meant a lot to me. I can't help it. Alex, I hope you get your wish. Thank you, Santa. At least for listening. Okay, you guys, I found the ribbons. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, this is looking so great. Come on, sweetie, don't you want to help with the decorations? Come on, Trev. Oh, they're already done. Not quite. There's one ornament left. The Christmas angel. Did I ever tell you the story about where it came from? Every year. Hey, that's part of the tradition. Tell us again, Mom. Oh, okay. Huh? It was the night before Christmas, many years ago, and it had been snowing all day. And by dark, the roads were closed. In some places, there was no electricity. But we were all safe and sound, your grandma and grandpa, my sisters and me. That's when the phone rang. It was Mrs. Josephson. She was about to give birth, and Mr. Josephson's car wouldn't start. There was no way they could get to the hospital. So, your grandpa drove as far as he could, then hiked the rest of the way two hours to get to their house. Boy, I bet he was cold. His toes were frostbitten. <laughs> but there was no time to think about that. Mrs. Josephson was in labor. It went on for six, six hours. hours, finally. At one minute before midnight, she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. The next day, as if by some miracle, a gift arrived at the front door. The Christmas angel. I guess Mr. Josephson's car finally started. What a load of crap. Trevor, where are you going? I'm in your damn business. Hey, hey, don't you talk to your mother that way. Trevor, I went to a lot of trouble to make this Christmas special for you, for all of us. I'm sick of your stupid Christmases. You didn't used to be. Now, I'm asking you, just for tonight, to please stay here with your family. I said you're staying here. You gonna stop me? I'll stop you. John, Trevor, take off your coat. I said take off your coat. Get off me. Oh, Mom. Honey, damn you. Don't you ever do so much, or you hear me? Don't you dare! John, stop! I'm all right. No, I'm all right. Okay. The camera kept giving me a free shot. Come in. Ready, Alex? For the last time. Doesn't say much for quality programming, does it? First, I'll fly away, bites the dust. Now, Alex, live. What about you, Norma? What's gonna happen to you? There are three things you can count on in life. Death, taxes, and talk shows. I'm gonna do just fine. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies, I'm looking for... Oh, wait a minute, aren't you Alex live? <laughs> That's right. Well, I'll be damned, I'm your biggest fan. That's very kind. I'm Norma Lear, co-executive producer of Alex Live. How do you do? Is there something I can do for you? 
Maybe the other way around. I hear you're looking for a sponsor. I'm afraid that's about the only thing that'll save us. Well, you're looking at him. Don't tell me you don't know who I am. Big Al Barker, the prince of Pricetown. You own Pricetown? The shopper's kingdom. Where bargains reign supreme. You know my store. Oh, I shop there all, on occasion. Now I recognize you. I've seen your ads in the newspaper, wearing your crown. <laughs> it's a miracle. We've been saved. And in the nick of time. The Saint Nick of time. Tell me, Mr. Barker. Call me Big Al. Everybody does. Big Al. Have you by any chance been talking to Santa Claus? <laughs> Sweetheart, I haven't talked to Santa Claus since I was a kid. What do you say? We in business? I don't know what tone you hear in my voice, Mom. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, you and Truman just enjoy the sunshine. Bring us back some oranges. Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you on Christmas morning. Okay, Mom. Yeah, bye. Trevor? No, it's just us. Santa's elves. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Delivering presents to all good boys and girls. Oh, why don't you take off your jacket? Stay a while. Oh, thanks, but we've got to get to the precinct. Falconer can't come to Christmas. Christmas will just have to come to him. Oh, boy, and I've got to get to the courthouse. Season's greetings from Meter May. No, I have an appointment with Judge Guy's White. I'm requesting custody of Thomas for the holidays. Well, not for me, for Mitch. You guys should have seen how sad he was. He didn't have his son with him. That's why I decided to ask for him. That's one hell of a Christmas present, Stinker Bell. Actually, a belated Hanukkah gift. <laughs> That's what the season's all about. I'd give them to you myself if I could. Oh, I know you would, sweetie. Georgie, hmm. what happened to your face? Oh, nothing. I fell down. Must have been quite a tumble. You're all black and blue. Look, the Christmas angel broke. Oh, no, not Daddy's Christmas angel. How did that happen? I had it in my hand, and I dropped it. it it fell down. So clumsy of me. Are you sure? I said that's what it was. Okay, I was just asking. We had a fight. It was a misunderstanding. In fact, it was my fault. I lost my balance. Trevor didn't mean to hit me. We've got savings by the ton, bargains by the box load. Just check out this king-size deal. In our pet department, only $9.99 for a 75-pound bag of cat food. For what? Make your a pets puma? feel like royalty, too. With price down to really adds a touch of pet food. We've got style to the show, don't you think? Alligators Alex, I don't give a damn our if he hawks manure. Fresh fertilizer, $5.50 for a 60-pound bag. As long as we're still on the air. So come see me, Big Al Barker, the Prince of Pricetown, where prices are fit for a pauper and merchandise is fit for a king. And we're out. Okay, we're back at five. So how'd I do? You were wonderful, Your Majesty. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a natural-born actor. Next to your Prince of Pricetown, Olivier's Prince of Denmark is but a pale ghost. Prince of Denmark? Does he have a furniture warehouse? If you'll excuse me, I have to get ready for the next segment. Look, I was wondering, uh, since you're the star and I'm the new sponsor, if maybe we could have dinner, you know, to cement our relationship. Having a sale? Six bags for only $3.98? I think it's a great idea. How about tonight? Oh, I can't possibly. I, I have some last minute Christmas shopping to do and I have to. She'd love to. <laughs> Would you excuse us just a minute? Mama, I am not having dinner with that man. He's crude, he's vulgar. He's the sponsor. I don't care if he's Santa Claus. Listen to me, Halsey. Whatever you think of that man, he obviously thinks a lot of you or he wouldn't be here. So you're gonna put on your best dress and your best smile and you're gonna let him know just how appreciative you are. Otherwise, Alex Live is going to be dead. Thank you. Shall we say my place? Eight o'clock? I'm at the precinct, and they're telling me, oh, Detective Falconer's off for the holidays. You lied to me. Hold on a second. I didn't lie to you. What do you call it telling me you had to work over Christmas? Trying to spare your feelings. 
Because you didn't want to be with me? Because I wanted to be by myself. Teddy, and what were you doing down at the precinct? Well, I came to bring you a damn present. Well, Thank you. Well, aren't you going to open it? It's ducks. Yes, it is. It's incredible. Hand painted by my own little hands. Uh, Teddy Reed original. I am honored. Well, got it for your collection, but what I think I'll do with it is strangle you. <laughs> hey, 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 not too tight now. There. I'm sorry that I don't have a present for you. Did I ask for one? It's not that I didn't want to get you something. Since my son died, I don't celebrate Christmas. That's what I was trying to tell you at the AA meeting. So I made up the excuse about being on duty. Don't you think it'd be easier if you spend Christmas with someone who cares about you? I tried that once with my wife. The only problem is that Christmas is about the birth of a child, not the loss of one. There's no way around that. I'm going to tell you. You go and you celebrate and you... You be with Kat, you be with your sisters. And I thank you for the tie. Merry Christmas. I've uh, been waiting for you, Char. I just came to get the new CD player you said you were getting me. Well, uh, you can save yourself the trouble. It's uh, not there. Now, it's true. Your mother and I don't feel your behavior merits reward. In fact, we decided we have no choice. You've given us no choice, Trevor, but uh, to send you away. <laughs> yeah, right. We mean it, Trevor. We're not backing down. Hello, Trevor. I'm Paul. I'm from the Rediscover Institute. They're here to take you. They're here to take you to the school Dr. Hillman recommended. You, you can't. I'm sorry, Trev. No, no, we're not sorry, Trevor. You need help, son, and, and so do we. Well, I'm not going. You can either come with us quietly, or if necessary, we can restrain you. It's up to you. Creep, Dad! There has to be a limit, Trevor. And you may think we don't love you, but we do. And I hope one day you understand that. Come on, son. Mom, I'll be better. I promise. Please don't send me away. I can't. Yes, you can. You have to. It was very thoughtful of you to bring me a new refrigerator-freezer, Mr. Barker. Big Al. <laughs> Big Al. But some flowers or a bottle of wine really would have sufficed. Oh, nothing's too good for my little star. <clears throat> Did anyone ever tell you that your eyes are the color of a sapphire pinky ring? Not recently. So, Big Al, uh, what made you decide to sponsor my show? The intelligent conversation, the thought-provoking topics? I figure you sell one toaster, why not sell 30? Or 30 dozen? Toasters. And I wanted to see your face in every TV set in my store. What's the matter? You don't like skinless breast of chicken Dijon and steamed broccoli? Well, it's great if you just had a colostomy. Well, I, for one, believe in living healthily. And I, for one, believe in living. What do you say? I take you out, show you the town, let the town see you? Uh, no, 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 I, I wouldn't want to be seen in public. I mean, I would love to go out, but uh, 
People recognize me from the show and... Why the hell didn't you say so? Hello, Omar. Big Al. Omar's got the best Moroccan chow in town. Does delivery service always include a, a belly dancer and waiters? Uh, I made him a deal on appliances, so he makes me a feast anytime, any place. Here, try some. Oh, no. oh, come on, just one little piece. Hmm, not bad. Camel has to be cooked just right, or it's stringy. Camel. <laughs> What's she doing? She wants to teach you how to belly dance. Oh, I have a very delicate stomach. Oh, come on, Alex. Live a little. One thirty in the morning. You expect me to sleep? Can you honestly tell me you're able to sleep after yeah. what happened? You at least have to try. You try. I don't know when I'll ever see my son again. <sighs> Honey. All the wonderful Christmases we've spent together, they've always been some of our happiest memories. Well, you can be sure this will be a Christmas Trevor will never forget for the rest of his life. We did what we had to do. Are we that helpless, John? That pathetic? That we couldn't work it out ourselves? Well, there's nothing pathetic about asking for help. I never should have listened to you. I never should have agreed. Oh, that's not fair, Georgie. We both agreed. This no, was going to be a hard... No, you insisted, and I gave in. Well, now it's my turn. I'm going to call and tell them to bring him back. Or better yet, we can go there ourselves tomorrow. No. No, we are not calling, and he is not coming back. Well, now that you've given away, he's no longer your problem? He's staying where he is. No, I want him home where he belongs. Come on, Georgie, you know as well as I do, he doesn't belong here right now, as not the way he is. As I'm his mother, he will always belong Listen here. Listen to me. He was hurting himself. He was hurting this family, and he hurt you. And I will not allow that to happen. Now, I'm going to go to bed, and maybe I'll sleep a little. And maybe tomorrow I'll sleep a little more. seem to be running into each other a lot lately. So, what are you doing here at the courthouse? Jury duty. Jury duty? I'm paying a parking ticket. Well, which is it? Both. <laughs> so, what, what are you doing here? I'm buying stamps. Isn't that the post office? Why do I get the feeling we're both lying? <sighs> because we are. Okay, the truth of the matter is, I was here asking Judge Guy's wife for custody of Thomas. I can't believe it. That you would do that behind my back without telling me. Well, it was supposed to be a surprise. You're damn right it's a surprise. Why do you think I was here? You mean you... Talk about selfish. Here I am asking him to give you Thomas for the holidays, and you're here asking for yourself. No, that's not why I'm here. I was doing this for you. I know how much you wanted to be with Thomas, so I came here to convince the judge to let you have him. Well, whatever happens, one thing's for sure. Thomas is damn lucky to have you as a dad. Yeah, well, he didn't do too bad in the mom department, either. Do you think we can save her? You mean Georgie, or...? Angel, they're both pretty badly broken. I can't believe it's gone this far. Maybe if we got some glue. No, I want her to stay that way. 
In pieces? She's Daddy's angel. We can't just leave her like this. Come on, sis. It's worth a try. I said I like her. Just the way she is. Georgie, you did the only thing you could do. It was the right thing. The necessary thing. What are you listening to them for? They'll never tell you what they're really thinking. But we will. What kind of a mother would do what you did? You don't deserve to have a child. Trevor isn't the one who should be punished. You are. You all say those things so easily, so simply. But if it were your child, what would you have done? The truth is, what I did was cowardly and cruel. Georgie, don't say that. You're being too hard on yourself. That's not true, Georgie. I let some strangers take my son. What are you doing? I'm sorry, but you're all going to have to make other plans for the holiday. There isn't going to be a Christmas. At least not in this house. Alex, we have enough ornaments in here to decorate a tree in Rockefeller Center. I just want to make sure we don't run short. I owe it to Georgie to make as wonderful a Christmas as she would have made for us. Well, that's very sweet. Considering what's going on, I think we should just forget about the holidays this year. Absolutely not. In fact, it's all the more reason for us to celebrate. Celebrate what? How can you even ask? Every day you wake up healthy or see your son's smiling face. Or answer the phone, and it's me calling to nag you. <laughs> oh, oh, did I do that? Nope, 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 it's me. I'm expecting a phone call from Judge Guyswhite about the baby. This might be it. Good luck, sweetie. Oh, 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 well, look who it is. Santa. Alex. Well, did you get your Christmas wish? Oh, I got it all right. Did you, by any chance, mention our little conversation to Big Al Barker? Oh, I might have said a few words about it to the boss. Why? He just happens to be my new sponsor. Oh, what well, do you know? Big Al's quite a guy. Oh, he's quite a guy, all right. But he's not my kind of guy. You see, he and I are two very different people. <laughs> I like Wagner's ring. He likes pinky rings. I believe in low fat and high fiber. He believes in throwing caution and cholesterol to the winds. I say tables are meant for eating. He thinks they're meant for dancing. Santa, Big Al just isn't for me. Have you told him how you feel? How can I? He's my sponsor. Well, Alex, I'm sorry your Christmas wish isn't all that you wished for. Not your fault, Santa. Casey, don't. Casey, no. Casey? Casey, no! Casey, no! Coming! It's Santa. I don't know why you're not coming down the chimney. It's the greatest savings event of the year. Price Town's after Christmas blowout. Entire inventory up to 50% off. One thing's for sure. You could sell pork chops to a rabbi. Oh, Big Al can be very persuasive, all right. I did things last night I never dreamed I would do. Then the evening was a success. It was a disaster. He's brash. He's boisterous, he's overbearing. Although I have to admit, he has a very attractive belly button. 
Sounds like you had a better time than you think. This is the gift you've been looking for. I'm sorry, Norma. I know he's our sponsor, but if I have to go out with him in order to save our show, then I say let them cancel it. And we're out. Number two, boom. I want you one closer next time. Merry Christmas, ladies. Alec, I have to tell you, last night was a blast. The best time I've had since the Ali Frazier fight. Thank you, Big Al, but I have something to tell you, too. Even though you're our sponsor and I appreciate all you've done. Hold on. You don't have to say it. Look, I know sometimes I come on a little strong. Barbara, my late wife, used to say, for God's sake, back off, Al. But I say if you want something or someone, you go for it. And that's why I went for you. But if the feeling isn't mutual, don't worry about it. And don't think I'm going to pressure you because I'm your sponsor, because I'm not that kind of guy. Friends? Friends. Well, do we still have a show? You know, Norma, I may have seriously misjudged Big Al Barker. Underneath his gold watch and his gold cufflinks and his gold pinky ring might just be a heart of gold. Oh, I know there is. That's why he plays Santa every year at Pricetown. He what? Well, they say he gives away thousands of dollars in money and toys to underprivileged kids and their families. Isn't that something? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings to you wherever you are. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Hey. Hey. Georgie? Hey. Hi. Oh, Thomas George, it's all ready. Come on, baby. Look who's here. Look. Are you sure we can't convince you to come with us to Alex's tonight? Come on, what do you say? Let me get your presents. Hey. Any word from Judge Geiswhite? Well, he said he'd try to call us before the holiday recess. I guess he couldn't get to our case in time. You know, if it were up to me, I'd give you Thomas George this minute, right now. I'm so proud of the way you two have set aside your differences. But I suppose that's cold comfort. Are you kidding? Coming from you, it means everything. Georgie, you've been an inspiration to us. <clears throat> me? An inspiration? Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad you think I've taken such good care of your son. Wish I could say the same thing about mine. I spent Christmas with my son. My wife could never bring herself to come here, and we would fight about that. She'd say, what good does it do? He doesn't really know you're there. You're just coming here to visit with your own guilt, to relive the pain. Was she right? I don't know. It was her choice to move away, to forget. Just like it was my choice to remember. So you keep coming back? I have to. This feeling, this pain is so much a part of me, I don't know who I'd be without it. You know, James, I would love to tell you not to punish yourself. But that's something you have to come to on your own. And there's no point in telling you not to remember, because what happened will live with you forever. But how you choose to live with it is up to you. I should do what my wife did. I should stop coming here and I should move away. Oh, well, I tried that once, taking off, but the one thing I found was that the past follows you, no matter where you go. That doesn't leave me a lot of choice. I think if Casey could see you right now, he would feel very sad knowing that you deprived yourself of any joy and comfort. I can't believe that he'd want that. What would he want? To know that you remember him the way he was. 
the happy, smiling little boy whose father loved him more than anything else in life. But he'd also want to know that you'd found a way to forgive yourself. The way he would forgive you. Santa. Alex. I know it's late, and that this is a very busy night for you, visiting all the good little boys and girls, but there's a last-minute wish I have to make. Very well. What is it? Well, I'm afraid I've been a bad little girl, an ungrateful little girl. Oh? There's a very nice man, a prince among men, who's been very kind to me. Only I couldn't see it because I was too blind. Now that I see him for who he really is, I'd like to ask his forgiveness. Why didn't you tell me it was you all along? And make you think it was charity, that I felt sorry for you? Didn't you? Hell no. I felt respect, admiration for a woman who's fought hard to survive. Barbara, my late wife, she was a fighter. Right up until the very end, she'd say to me, Shut up, Alan, listen. I want you to live every day to the fullest, as if it was your last, because it just might be. And I want you to live it for me, too, because if you don't, I'm gonna come back and buy retail just to spite you. <laughs> you really didn't know it was me? What can I say? I still believe in Santa Claus. Well, Alex certainly thought of everything, even the mistletoe. <laughs> the only thing missing is Georgie. Well, I tried to convince her to come just for a little while, change presents. After all, it is Christmas, right, pup? Okay, everybody gather around for a toast with Mom's famous non-alcoholic eggnog. Hey, be careful with this stuff. The last time we downed it, we all got poisoned and dropped like flies. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you decided to be with us, James. It was nice to feel part of a family. Okay, everybody got a cup? This is the first year I can remember where we haven't all been together. But still, we're in each other's hearts. And we have a great deal to be thankful for. You said it, sis. So let's say a toast. To health, to hope, and to surviving the challenges of another year. And to next Christmas when we'll all be together again. Right. To Christmas. To Christmas. Cheers. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> now, how about a carol? Mm, right. Great idea. Mm. Right. Am I the am I right, Frankie? How about uh, Jingle Bell Rock? No, no, the Jingle Bell Rock. No, 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 like Christmas. I was hoping oh. you'd come. Now we're all together. <laughs> Honey, you changed your mind. No, 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 I, I can't stay. I, I just wanted to uh, stop by to drop off a last minute gift. When you left, I called Truman in Florida and got Judge Geisweit's home number. And we had a discussion and he gave his consent for you to have Thomas George. Oh. You hear that, Frankie? He's yours for the holidays. No, Mitch, he's yours. That was my gift to you. Actually, it's for both of you. And not just for two weeks. For good. The judge agreed with me. Oh, Georgie. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just raise him the best you know how. Treasure as many moments as you can. He's only yours for a short while. Okay, Trev, here we go. Ever. Up we go. Put that angel on there. Yeah. Good. Honey? I'm in here. Here are your presents, Mom. Oh, thanks. They've been made out like a bandit. Yeah. 
Thanks for the watch and the rollerblades. You're welcome. Listen, it's getting late. You better go up to bed. Merry Christmas, Mom. Merry Christmas. Night, Ev. Did he have a good time tonight? Considering. I'm sorry you didn't stay. That was a really loving thing you did for Frankie and Mitch. They did the loving thing. I was just the messenger. Hmm. The angel of mercy. Mm. Well, see you upstairs. Mm -hmm. Aren't you going to make a wish? What for? Dad always said, an angel is your, your most, most heartfelt, heartfelt wish set out in the, the world, world to come true. Can't you see it's broken? Then you've got to wish even harder. Watch over him. Next on Sisters. <laughs> Things always going off at the wrong time. Now, I've got to meet these sisters of yours. They're dying to meet you. I don't think he's anywhere near good enough for you. Besides, you deserve to find somebody wonderful. I already have. I don't know if I can be in a relationship where every time the phone rings, I'm worried that you've been shot. 